business with you, you army dog. <laughs> Just preach it. Look at my way, John. Take John chapter 1, verse 17. Jesus, this is so important. If I only had one sermon to give you, I'd give you this to help you walk in journey of life. Being raised Pentecostal, I don't know that in all my upbringing I ever heard a message on grace. Okay. All right. Amen. All right. 20? You never heard a message on grace? We have the idea, and let me give you an example. You take a four-year-old child and, and they go over and they take another sibling's toy. Yeah. That four-year-old child don't understand yeah. it's better to give than receive. Yeah. Right. He's not interested in it. He can't understand that. This is what he can understand. You take that child's toy again, and I will spank you. They can understand that. So the law, the Old Testament law, God had to use the law to spank to get people to come to a place because nobody was born again. Nobody in the Old Testament was born again. Not Abraham, not Isaac, not Jacob, not Elijah. None of them were born again. Come on, somebody. That's right. That's right. Jesus hadn't died yet. Right. You're on this side of the cross, and Jesus walks in you and yep. talks in you, and you can have a daily relationship with Him. And so their idea of serving God was keeping the day, the Sabbath. Right. That's right. It's not about a day, it's about a relationship of trust. That's right. That's right. So you can preach and miss the whole point. Yeah. Huh? There's whole groups that miss the whole point. <laughs> This whole Bible is about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about Jesus. The law was given for a purpose. It was given to shut everybody's mouth and make everybody guilty. All right. It was. That was the purpose of it. Look at it this way. The Old Testament law was God's way of operating on the body of humanity to remove the set can cancer sin. Right. Come on. If you walked in on a little of an operation, yeah. and you saw all the blood and guts everywhere, and a rib spreader, and a guy put his head, you'd say, ooh, these guys are mean. Uh -huh. But to save that person's life, they took the cancer out. Yeah. The law was given to remove the sin nature out of humanity so you can accept the Christ nature, and now you're a brand new creation. All right. If you try to keep the law, I have preachers get mad at me. They said, Brother Bentley, don't you preach the Ten Commandments? Don't uh -huh. you keep the Ten Commandments? I said, nobody ever has. <laughs> nobody has ever kept the Ten Commandments. Yep. Don't look so holy. <laughs> huh? God gave the law so strict, nobody could keep it. He gave it so strict, yep. he himself would have to come down right. and become human come and keep it for you. Right. So when you believe in him, you get his reward, not yours. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he didn't shed his blood so he could be saved. He, he wasn't strapped so he could be healed. Right. He didn't come for the healing conference. He did everything for you and gave it to you as a free gift. And you can receive that by believing in him. If you believe in him, you get all his benefits. Amen. 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 I don't have a law, but it's up to you to possess it. Grace provides it. Faith possesses it. But if you believe, I'm so unworthy, I'm so no good. Come on. I'm here right now. You're not worthy. Yep. Nobody here is worthy. Amen. Within yourself, nobody's worthy. Yeah. And once you get born again, trust it. You'll not live perfect. That's right. Amen. I mean, me and Brother Pete's only two. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for Pete's sake. Yeah. <laughs> he said, the law came by Moses. John 1, 17. But grace and truth. Let me say grace and truth. Grace and truth. Say it again. Grace and truth. Grace and truth is not a doctrine. No. It is a person. Yep. Jesus is grace. Jesus is truth. Yes. Do you ever notice when he came on the scene, he broke every rule they had? Yeah. 
healed on the wrong day. Yeah. Wouldn't wash his hand before you ate. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Let a prostitute wash his feet. Yeah. Broke every rule they had. It's not about rules and regulations. I don't smoke and I don't chew. I don't chase those girls that do. It's not about rules and regulations. It's about a relationship and a spiritual walk with God. Amen. So truth. God wants you to practice truth because that's what makes you free. When the enemy comes to you, he's going to come slippery and conniving and you're going to know who you are and what you have to resist him. He will get off the point of that blade. You take that sword and you take it and say, it is written, get thee behind me. I'm a brand new creation. I'll be washed in the blood. Most Christians, once they get born again, bless their heart, Live the rest of their life condemned. All right. Everybody in the house got issues. Come on. I said everybody in the house got issues. Come on. Huh? You see some preacher on television, you say he don't have issues. Honey, you follow him around, he got issues. Come on. That's right. You know why? <laughs> Only one third of you got changed. That's right. In the new verse, it's your spirit man that gets born again. All right. If right. you were stupid before you got saved, you still stupid. Come on. <laughs> True. If you were fat and ugly, you still. Well, you need help. <laughs> the only part that changed is your spirit man. Now God left you in charge of your flesh, yeah. your mind renewal. And when you take charge of that with the authority he gave you, that proves how much you love him. Come on. Some said, I love the Lord. I just can't stand people. Well, you need professional help. Come on. You can't love God and not love people. Right. The way you treat people, that's the way you are towards God. That's right. I thought that was good. <laughs> so they brought a woman in the act of adultery. Throw it down at Jesus' seat. They said, the law says stoner. What do you say? He said, daughter, I do not condemn thee. Go and sin no more. <laughs> now, 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 Jesus taught by contrast. Yeah. Listen carefully. I'm smarter than I look. I have a PhD. <laughs> for your hairdo. Yeah. Come on. So they caught the one in the act of adultery. He's thrown her down at Jesus' feet. They said, the law says stone her. Most Pentecostals all know is the, the rough, wrath, mean side of God that was in the Old Testament. Come on, right. come on, sir. Come on, there was no Jesus personified in the Old Testament. They were types and shadows. He was the rock. He, he, he was the, the sheep. He, he was the serpent on the pole. He was the rod of the sheep. He, all those are types and shadows. It's pointing to when the day he is coming. That's right. That's right. Huh? Stoned her. He said, I forgive you. Go and sin no more. He comes along and says, Your law says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You slap me, I'm going to slap you back. <laughs> but he said, I say, Love your mother in law. I mean, love your enemy. <laughs> Six of one, half a dozen of the other. <laughs> love, does it see the contrast? One. Is fight back. The other is love your enemy. It is impossible to love your mother-in-law. It can't be done without God's help. And then it puts a strain on him. Work with it. People don't let me come out there. So what we're after tonight is the truth. You using the truth for yourself in the midnight hour when there's nobody around and the temptation comes, you say, no, Mr. Devil, no, my body is the temple yes, of the yes, Holy yes. Ghost. Yes. We don't do that anymore. Yes. Huh? And that will empower you. Elsewise, you'll say, I'm not doing that. You wind up doing it and feel like an egg-sucking dog all week. All right, come on. You do it over and over. 
and over and over. Right. And a lifestyle of condemnation sets in. And so you feel unworthy. You feel no good. Yeah. And that hinders your faith, Come hinders on. your walk. Yeah. Come on. You should learn to use the word of God that will empower you to put temptation down. Praise God. Amen. I got a real big amen on that one. Everybody say, I love Brother Dale. Love Brother Dale. I'm a believer, and I'm not sure I believe that. So my renewal. Let me just show you a picture of what I'm talking about. I, I, God gave me this illustration, so I want to use it so you can understand it. Hey, my briefcase, sis. Uh, can I use you, brother? Now, I'm going to say some things that's not real nice. It's okay. This is just, this is just role play. Let's call him Joe the Jerk. Yeah. He is Joe the Jerk under the Old Testament. And I am a high priest. So when he sins, we're out there, when he sins, now that's my briefcase, but I'm going to call it a lamb. He's going to bring me a sacrifice. So bring me the sacrifice. When he hands the sacrifice to me, before he brings it to the high priest, he keeps it for three days. Pins it up so all of the lamb's entrails were empty. Did you ever notice that God said, don't bring me no sick lamb, don't no broken lamb, no disease, Bring me a perfect lamb. Yeah. Why? Because him bringing me this lamb proves he sinned. When he comes to me, the high priest, my assignment by God is to examine the lamb, not to examine him. All right. Hey, that's good. Uh, that's good. What he was. When I laid my hand on this lamb, oh. what he was, was conveyed to this lamb. Amen. He was guilty. The lamb is innocent. Ooh. Now he's innocent, and the lamb is guilty. Come on. God blesses us through sacrifice. He sacrificed himself. He became sin, so we can become the righteous of God. And he's no longer Joe the jerk. He's joyous Joe. Joy. Give him a hand, everybody. We have been so prone. Let me give you another way. Let's, let's, let's talk about Sister Fluffy. <laughs> Sister Fluffy waddles to church. <laughs> and then she goes visit her aunt in California that has a tummy tuck. And so when she comes back, she looks like they have been improved. Now she's lost all this weight. And she goes to church and goes, Ooh, she's fat. You were 90 days ago. Come on. <laughs> so nobody has the right come on, come on. to judge anybody else. But all have sinned and come short of the Lord of your God. Come on. But the trick come of on. the devil is this. Once you're saved, you kind of start feeling kind of good about you. Come on. Come on. Huh? Huh? And then you start looking at other people and judging them. Yeah. I would say 75% of all Christians' trouble come from judging other people. I believe that. Amen. Because when you judge someone else, come you open the door and let Satan come in and do it to you. Woo. Amen. Now listen to me. Just because they preachers on TV don't mean he's right. Okay. You'll hear preachers say, uh, you know, the Lord broke my leg <laughs> so I'd save him. I heard him. Oh. I would never God break my leg. <laughs> Last I checked, that's child abuse. Come on, come on. That's good. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. The Bible. Yeah. Book of James, 113. He said, let no man say when he's tempted. That's right. He tempted a God because right. God tempts no man. Yes. God does not bring the trial. He does not bring the storm. If you think he brought the trial and brought the storm, guess what? You won't resist him. That's right. Because after all, if God put it on you, if God caused the car wreck, if God brought the divorce, then why resist it? Come on. Uh-huh. 
The Bible says in the book of Corinthians, chapter 2, yeah. the Holy Ghost is the teacher of the church, yeah. not the devil. Come on. God does not use the devil to teach school. Come on. <laughs> I know that sounds simple, but Jimmy Stratton, how many people think that God uses the devil to teach them? Joy is quietness before God for church. <laughs> Somebody heek up in tongues for me. Come on. Come on. <laughs> God does not use the devil to teach his church. That's a major milestone. Well, in that car wreck, I got saved. Well, just folks are stupid. You could have got saved before the car wreck. All right. It wasn't the car wreck that done it. Others have had car wrecks and they didn't get saved. If the devil was the teacher, then I'll get a Paul Payton hammer and knock you in the head and make you hurt real bad. <laughs> that way you learn more. Good. I like you. Huh? Then the worst of all people on the planet are be the smartest people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't know how to tell you this. But we're not living in ordinary times. Yeah. No, we're not. We're living in the most perverted thinking. Uh, yeah, right. The Lord said to me not too long ago, He said, he said, people's thinking is holding back my blessing. Come on. Ooh. Okay. Their own thinking holds back my blessing. Okay. Some people don't think they're good enough. Come on. That'll hold it back. Yeah. They'll think if you messed up, that'll hold it back. Come on. How many times did you mess up when you forgave you of getting of being saved? Amen. How much Bible reading did you do before you got saved? Okay. How many days did you fast? How many offerings did you give? Come on, somebody. Okay. Let me show you the difference. Here we are in a situation. I'm preaching. Man in the back right there. He's a murderer, a thief, drug dealer, pedophile. Load him up. And we'll say, come on, brother. Give your heart to the Lord. God will forgive you. All right. We all believe that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I've killed people. That's all right. God will forgive you. Right. Yeah, but I've right. killed two people. That's all right. Kill three, four. Come on. God forgive you. We believe that God would have forgave Adolf Hitler if he repented. Amen. After killing six million people. Yeah. But then once people get born again. Come on, come on. And two or three days they come in here and they're going through some trouble. And maybe they had a relapse and maybe they've been drinking some. Come on, talk about this. <laughs> come on. Where'd all that grace go? Come on. Come on. Yes. I mean, before God had all kinds of grace, did God run out? No, no, listen to me. I'm not advocating sin, but I'm going to tell you, brother, God will help you when you fall. He'll pick Come you up, brother. brother. He won't leave you. He don't give up on you. He'll follow you until the end of the day. Trying to help you. Now, the gospel is called good news. Everybody say good news. Good news. Good news. In the book of Galatians, it says that, that God preached the gospel through Abraham. That the heathen will be blessed through Abraham. That's good news. Amen. That the heathen will be blessed through Abraham. Then Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, four gospels. Each one of them is different, had a different perspective, because each one of them was human. All right. Come on. Do you know the Bible tells the problems with the answer? Huh? It tells you the bad guys and the good guys. Yeah. Yeah. It don't just make a fairy tale book. It tells you there's some that left Jesus. For example, Judas had the best pastor, Amen. best friend, yeah. best teacher, and he still walked off. Yeah. So it wasn't Jesus, it was Judas. That's right. People like to blame the devil. The devil, the devil made me do it. No, no. you had a hand in it. Come on. The word gospel in all of Greek writings is only used twice outside the Bible. The gospel, the word gospel means this. Almost too good to be true. That's what the gospel means. You and I both believe that a sinner standing right out there, child of the devil, on his way to hell, can hear me preach, and in two minutes... Come here and get born again on the way to heaven and God is his father in two minutes. 
you can't become a doctor in two minutes. Huh? But in two minutes, you can change your destiny by choosing what God says and doing what God says. Now, when I pull into a service station, they don't, they don't say, Oh, the Son of God is here. Fill these tanks for free. <laughs> The world don't see in you what the Father sees in Amen. you. The Father sees. I see it's hard for me to spank my grandkids. Because they look like me. You are a chip off the old block. You have got the Father's DNA in you. Uh, we sang dumb, stupid songs like, I'm only human. No, you know. No, you're not. You're not only human. So one third of you, your spirit, in the new birth was made perfect. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Now you saw anybody? Well, it needs lots of work. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But if your spirit wasn't perfect, God couldn't live there. That's right. Amen. He made a temple not made with human hands. Right. For him to live in. Right. And then he sealed it yeah. with the Holy Ghost. Right. Yeah, that's right, you wall to wall, Holy Ghost. He cellophaned you and put the good housekeeping sealed on you and approved you. Yes. If he didn't, you ain't saved. Come on. Come on. So the four gospels, read them. The gospel according to Matthew, the gospel according to Luke, the gospel according to Mark, the gospel according to John. But now we have another gospel. I shock people all the time because God actually wants you to use your brain. Yeah. A lot of Christians' brain is on vacation. Right, right. <laughs> Not in this area, yeah. way up north. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. All right. So Paul comes along uh -huh. after the cross. After it, right. After it. Jesus appeared 14 times mm -hmm. after his resurrection. 14 times. He never healed anybody. Jesus never got anybody saved. Jesus never got anybody born again. He never even got anybody baptized in the Holy Ghost. He turned and left that to the believers to do it. So today, the only way God moves is through a believer. Right. Come on. God is not out of the cow pasture having church by himself. Come on, brother. <laughs> so all of the book of Galatians says, don't let anybody pervert the gospel of grace. Come on, right. Come on. Right. Jesus came along preaching truth and grace. Now listen to me, I'm smarter than you think. Mm -hmm. Some things are okay in the Old Testament, it's not okay today. Okay. <laughs> You remember Elijah? <coughs> Call fire down and burn them? <coughs> well, Jesus' disciples, they're going through a town, they wouldn't give them a motel room, and they said, Jesus, let's just call fire down and, and turn them into Christian critters. <laughs> and Jesus said, No, guys, you don't know <coughs> what spirit you're of. I came to seek and to save. Amen. What was all right for Elijah to do in his dispensation was not all right for them to do. Come on, somebody. All right. Huh? They even had Old Testament scripture for it, and it wasn't all right to do. All right. So quit identifying with Job. Quit identifying with fallen things and start identifying with he would raise us up together and made yes. us sit together. The epistles are written to you Amen. and about you. Most of the Old Testament, especially the law, was written to them that was under the law. You never was under the law. Yeah. You never was. Yeah. You never was under the law. Unless you're over 2,000 years old. <laughs> it wasn't even written to Gentiles. You're a Gentile. Yeah. And so in Jesus' ministry, he told the disciples, only go to the law sheep of Israel. He wasn't sent to Gentiles until they rejected him, and then he turned to the Gentiles <laughs> so we never was under the law. We've always been under grace. All right. Grace is not getting by with sin. Come on. Oh, come on. 
real Bible grace according to Titus, verse 12, the grace that appeared unto salvation unto all men teaches us to live godly in this present world. Grace is not getting by and excusing. Grace is empowerment by God to live above sin. What's the wrong with sin? It deceives. That's right. Huh? And little sin become bigger sin. Yeah, right. Huh? Every alcoholic I've ever met told me I'm quitting anytime I want to. As a rule, a man's a fool. When it's hot, he wants it cool. When it's cool, he wants it hot. He always wants what he ain't got. Come on. Well, if you put it in how he wants it, just go ahead and quit. But they can't. But they tell themselves that. It takes the power of God. Hey, come on, somebody. And, and, and so the gospel, I want, I'm going to get to where we're living right now. Something is wrong in our, you, you can see what's going on in the world by looking at the arena of politics. I don't know how you bleed, but if you don't bleed like I do, you need to repent. Come on. There's some good falls in government. Right. Yes, there are. Come on. In California, it's a thousand dollar fine to pass out a plastic straw at a restaurant. Amen. Thousand oh, wow. dollar fine. Yes, yes. But the same government that will fine you for using a plastic straw will allow a, a, an alien from another country to come in here, put them on food stamp. Give them a driver's license and let them vote and let them hold a government position. Come on. Yeah. Something wrong with the picture. Yeah. New York, you cannot buy a 64 ounce sugary drink. Amen. Sugar is bad. Mm. Mm -hmm. You ain't got enough sense, so we ain't gonna let you drink too much sugar. <laughs> Turn right around and sign a bill that you can kill a baby. Yeah. Nine months in prison. Come on, somebody. Perversion. Perversion. The devil is the author of perversion. What is bestiality? Yeah. Perversion is perversion. Sexual. Yeah. Social perversion. Right. Now, Facebook has never healed the sick, but it sure has called the dumb to speak. Yeah. <laughs> 2 a.m. I want to brush my teeth and go to bed. We don't care. Go to bed. <laughs> it is not national news that you're going to brush your teeth and go to bed. He said, I don't care who preaches any other gospel besides grace. Let him be accursed. I don't care if an angel appears. So you ought to take everything back to Scripture, especially news. Testament scripture. Yep. Read the whole book of Hebrew. You know what you'll get out of it? Better, 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 better covenant, better promises. Yep. He said if the Old Testament could do it, we wouldn't need the New Testament. Right. Aren't you glad you live in the day when Jesus has come and offered forgiveness and offered his blood and ever lived and seen for you? Brother, if you fail, it's your own stinking thought, brother. If you won't quit, he won't quit. Right? No, he won't. Come on. I've locked the door and can't nobody get out, so uh, if y'all don't get happy, y'all ain't going home. So <laughs> somebody say amen. Amen. Y'all glad we came? Yes. Uh, yeah. In Philippians 3 and 9, it says this. Mm -hmm. Not having mine own righteousness, being found in him, oh. not having mine own righteousness. Mm -hmm. You do not have your standing with God as you. Amen. Y'all look at me like I just dropped the bus. <laughs> We pray some of the dumbest prayers that shouldn't be prayed. I know David prayed some of them, but David wasn't a born again Christian. You hear someone pray, Oh Lord, create a clean heart in me, oh Lord. He did when he got saved. All right. They'll pray, 
Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. You don't have to pray that. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake yes. you. You're wasting good air. Come on. Come on. And so people pray over the offering. And they'll say, Lord, bless those that give and bless those that don't give. You're wasting your time. If you can bless those that don't give, then why give? Come on. Come on. You got to have kids to have grandkids. That's right. No kids, no grandkids. Right. No plenty seed, no guinea harvest. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like you preaching. Blame Brother Pete. He let me go. <laughs> <laughs> They'll pray things like, oh, God. Oh, God. Just... Just, just make me, oh God, just humble. He ain't gonna humble you. <laughs> it's your choice. Come on, come on. Oh Lord, just come and take over. You're not a robot. <laughs> People have their own idea. Yeah. Cause they have read scripture in the Old Testament that he had to spank people. And corral people with the law to get them to obey him. But you and I are sons. We're not, we're not, we're, no, we sons. We serve him by choice. Yeah. He don't have to spank me. I am with him and obedient. Amen. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. So judging people hmm. is when people look at someone else and say, well, they ought to do that. Okay. Yeah. Come and they say, well, I would never. All Come right. on, brother. Anytime you say I would never, you done judge, jury, and carry out the sentence. I would never. Well, I didn't commit adultery, not the big A. But you done something else. Okay. We adhere to the big ten. The ten commandments. But there's 613. 613. I doubt you didn't know most of them. Come on. But they're all wrapped up in one. That's right. In the New Testament. That's right. Believe on the Lord Jesus and love your neighbor as yourself. That's right. And you have completed the entire Bible. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Try to hold it down. <laughs> and so for years, as I was going to get to, I'm. They meant well. All right. You can mean well and preach wrong. Mm -hmm. And so when they preach almost every sermon, Jesus coming, Jesus coming, Jesus coming. My basketball coach said, Dale said, you got a brilliant mind. Where are you going to go to college? I said, man, we ain't got, I ain't got time to go to college. The Lord's coming. Come on. <laughs> I never dreamed I'd ever get married and then especially have kids. And now my kids have got kids. And my grandkids are looking. <laughs> huh? I said, huh? <laughs> so when you preach the word one-sided. All right. And not balance it out with occupy till I come. Okay. Right. You spend your whole life not having a long-term vision. Because the Lord coming. The Lord coming. The come Lord coming. All right, yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. The word preached wrong can put you in the Come on. The word preached wrong can hinder you. Thinking you have to beg God. You don't have to beg God or talk Him into the notion. He's already in the notion. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy to help in a time of need. He knows you need help. Amen. I believe Psalms 12 says, I know you ran out of dirt. Dust. Did he just call me a dirt bag? What kind of? <laughs> you're a dirt bag. All right. Huh? We put you in the ground. When you die, you'll turn back to dirt. Yeah. He knows the frailty. He knows you're just, just the, the part of you is not born again. Now, when the trump sounds, your body will change and your soul will change. Yes. But until then, you need to rise up in your spirit and master yourself and strengthen your faith and make yourself mine. Amen. One of Satan's greatest weapons is condemnation. Come on. To condemn you. 
<laughs> it makes you feel like an egg sucking dog. Come on. Huh? Nobody knows about that Playboy magazine I got here. <laughs> Nobody knows about the Playmate of the Month. <laughs> so where's quietness full gospel church? The body, your body, is no different from a sinner. Your soul is no different from a sinner's. It has to constantly renew the mind and renew the mind and renew the mind. So when you start over here, to you arrive over there, it's a whole process of transformation. Turn you from a worm to a butterfly. Huh? You may look like a worm. You may act like a worm. But you had the butterfly city. All right, come on. You're on the road. Huh? Come on, somebody. God is working on you. Yes. Yes. If you look back over your life, oh, he put certain people in your life yeah, to get you where you are. Come on. Come on. Yeah. And he must love you. He sent his favorite preacher down here to preach to you. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. But my job is to tell you the truth. It's always the truth that will make you free. That's right. The truth will. Praying don't make you free. No. Come on. Singing right. don't make you free. No. It's the truth. And that's what gets the devil out of your arena. Yes. Is when you turn to him, Satan, it is written. Yes. Hmm? Come on. Come on. Get out of my Thank God. Quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> Everybody here has made mistakes. If you had a calculator by the time you got born again to now, you need new batteries. All right. Come oh, on. I say that too. <laughs> Come on. And so I'm not I'm not telling you to fail, yes. but I'm telling you there are failures, but that shouldn't stop you. Come on. Amen. Now let me show you the difference. I'm talking about contrast. Uh-huh. Abraham lied. Yeah, he did. Didn't he? Yeah. Lied about his wife since she's her sister. She must have been a good looking heifer. I mean, at 90 years old, he's afraid somebody's going to take her. She must have been good looking. <laughs> and Abraham, after 120, had six more kids. Yep, sure did. That had only got on him and stayed. <laughs> the Bible says, Book of Romans. From Adam to Moses. Let me say this to you first. When you was a sinner, what made you a sinner? Well, I guess because I sinned. No, no. I'm here to tell you, no. Trust the mirror. The Bible said you were made a sinner by Adam. That's right. Amen. Adam made you a sinner. You didn't make you a sinner. That's right. Adam made you a sinner. You was a sinner when you were born. That's right. You was innocent, but you still a sinner. Yep. And you grew up and you tore up stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <Thanks God. laughs> so how could Adam get, uh, Abraham get by with lying? Yeah. Didn't take up for his wife? Gonna let another man have her? Was <laughs> he's affrighted? That's King James for feared. He's afraid? Because yeah. there was no law said thou shalt not lie. Mm. And so from Adam to Moses, sin was in the world, but it wasn't charged to him. All right. Yeah. Am I? I apologize, I'm keeping some of y'all awake. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the Autobahn? Yeah. It is a German freeway. I have been down the German freeway. I look over, Pastor Woods, he's driving 160. <laughs> Kilometers, that's about 120. Er, speed up. I said, uh, Brother, aren't you kind of worried about the popo? <laughs> he said, No popo, no popo. Yeah. No speed limit. Yeah. 
All right, 120, even though no speed limit, the cops can't pull you up and give you a ticket because there's no law, no speed limit law. So he can't break the law that's not there. That's right. Amen. And Adam, I mean, Abraham, there was no law that said, Thou shalt not lie. Yeah. So God did not impute sin to him. Amen. Come on. All right. But then here came the law. The hammer came down. Yeah. He gave the Ten Commandments. And the first man that broke the law in Numbers chapter 15, guess what he was doing? Picking up sticks yeah, on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. to cook a meal yeah. on the Sabbath. Yeah. They arrested him. And he said, God, what shall we do with him? And God said, kill him. Amen. Uh, that's a little harsh. <laughs> uh, kill him. But if you had a tumor, and the doctor said, we're going to have to cut you over. He said, well, that's kind of harsh. You jump over to Samuel 15, chapter, and he told the prophet, whatever, preachers used to kill people. I'm glad I got delivered from that. <laughs> <laughs> they would go in and kill every dog, kill every cat, kill every old. They did. Yeah. Elijah killed the prophets of Baal. Yep. Yep. Aren't you glad we're under grace? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You don't see anybody in the New Testament, any preachers killing anybody. Amen. So the law was God's strict, binding, corralling, spanking to take the abscess of sin out of humanity so he put in the nature of himself. Come on. Yes. The best right. thing that ever happened to you is change your nature. Amen. Yep. Inside, you don't want to sin. Amen. Amen. So all the problem you have is your body and your flesh, and you need to keep it fed with the Word. Come on, come on. Prayed up, yeah. and then you can control it and make it mine. Amen. Yes. Amen. Give the Lord a good shout, everybody. Hallelujah. So this plan God had, He knew man couldn't keep it, so he came down and kept it for you. Amen. And when you believe in him, you get his reward. Do you know it? Uh, you know what's written in heaven? What's your name, Jerry? Right there on the second row. What's your name? Keith. Keith? Did you know in heaven it's written down that Keith died on the cross? Amen. And that Keith went to hell and went to the devil? And Keith rose on the third day? It's written there, your name. That you died. Amen. Yep. You do know you died. In the new verse, the Holy Ghost overshadowed you and took out your own human spirit and put in a brand new creation. You died. You're not even the same person you used to be. Amen. Amen. I said amen. Amen. So everything we get today is focusing on the Lord Jesus and what he did and not your failures. Good man falls down seven times. But a great man gets up eight. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Are you listening to me? So don't live a life of condemnation. The devil tried to bring up your past, bring up his future. Amen. I had a brother one time, and he's gone up with the Lord now, and uh, he, he, he had spoke to He got in position real bad, and, and uh, he got to where he couldn't even breathe. And uh, he is such a bad case. I rushed him to the hospital, and, and they took him in there. And the doctor said, uh, uh, "Mr. Beggy, his name is Donald. Mr. Beggy said, do you smoke?'" He said, "No, no." He said, "You, you, you, you don't smoke?" He said, "No." He said, "Did you used to smoke?" He said, "Yeah." Said, when did you quit? He said, "Yesterday." <laughs> I, need to I don't care if your sin before church that was yesterday. It is gone. If you repent, you're worse in the blood. Be quick to repent. Amen. All right. Be quick to forgive. Yes. All right. Yeah. Come on. Be slow to speak. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Huh? Amen. The less judging you can do, the better Come off on. you'll be. Come on. In closing, my first final closing. <laughs> Growing up, I thought God didn't want me sinning because He wanted to have no fun. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Cause sin had pleasure for a season. But that season's off short. That's right. All of his sin had barbs in it. That's right. Huh? That fish may like that worm, mm -hmm. but there's a barb inside that worm. Amen. 
Sin does this. It opens the door up and gives Satan an inroad yes, in your life. Yes, right. I got one flaw. Oh. <laughs> so, even though God's forgiven you and you can repent, the practice of sin over and over and over cool. will cost you. That's right. In your health, in your relationship. My wife, she said today, she's kind of funny. She's from Kentucky. <laughs> That's a foreign country. <laughs> but she, she don't like me dating other women. <laughs> she's strange like that. And when you let the devil use you, come on, come on. Here you are a child of God. Yeah. And you let the devil use you. And then want God to use you. Come on, come on, come on. Who you yield to, that's who you become the servant of. That's right. And God don't give up on you, but it hurts your relationship. That's right. Because next time you go to pray, guess who's going to bring up your past? That's right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes days to get that image out of you, what you did. To cleanse your mind with the washing of the water of the Word. Come on, somebody. Amen. So I implore you, and if you decide, you decide. Ain't nothing to do. If I decided, I will never eat chocolate again. No, I'm not. I just say it. If I decided, you couldn't make me eat chocolate. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you this. I'll never kiss my mother-in-law again. <laughs> you know what? See you in heaven. Yeah. I'm going to deal with God. I said, God, I want you to do me one favor. When I get to heaven, I want a 40-acre front lawn. And I want my mother-in-law to have to mow it twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sit on the porch and drink sweet tea. <laughs> and saying, come by y'all here. Come by y'all. Y'all need him tonight. Yes, yeah. Learn to use the word for yourself. Yeah. Learn to grab the right word. Right in the back of the word. Know what he's done for you. Know who you are. And you can't be beat. Amen. Amen. Right. I said amen. 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 You stand your feet, please. Put your hand over your heart. I, I don't know if I'll touch this or not. Last night I preached on getting drunk. You have a right to get drunk in the spirit. You know what is peculiar about a person that gets drunk? They go down the road talking to themselves. Come on. You didn't learn to talk to yourself. Come on. Come on. You didn't learn to talk to yourself. David said, Oh my soul. Don't get down. Get up. Come on. Learn to talk to yourself. Learn to say what the Word says about you. It takes real faith in God when you feel all the yuck of a past sin or a past failure and then you go to pray. It takes faith to believe you're forgiven when you don't feel forgiven. All right. The feelings have nothing to do with it. We walk by faith and not by sight. So I want you to pray this prayer after me. Oh God in heaven. Oh God in heaven. I stand before you now. I stand before you now. I see in your word. I see in your word. I am to walk in the truth. I am to walk in the truth. The truth makes me free. The truth makes me free. I will continue in your word. I will continue in your word. I will hear your voice. I will hear your voice. And I will obey you. I will obey you. I am strong in you. I am strong in you. You are my keeper. You are my keeper. You are my helper. You are my helper. You're my advocate. You're always for me. You're always for You're me. never against me. You're never against you me. never condemn me. You never condemn me. You do not hold my sin against me. You do not hold my sin. You ask me forgive me. Ask me forgive and forget me. it. And forget like it. Like it never happened. Like it never happened. So I will come forth so I will come to the throne of grace with boldness and receive the grace you have for me. Amen. Amen. Now go ahead and get, give me your best praise. Give me your best praise. Hallelujah. Before we go, go ahead and be seated. Uh, every year when we come here, uh, we we look forward to coming here. Yes. Because the people here. Yes, come on. I don't know if y'all know that, but y'all not normal. <laughs> hey, man. Y'all, y'all really love God. Yeah. I know you do. Yeah. And God wants to mature you. Right. 
See, you can really love God and still be wrong in Samaria. Amen. Amen. So he sent me here, uh, not because I'm anything special, but I'm a Holy Ghost person, but I'm also a Word person. All right, yeah. And I've been there a hundred times, a thousand, when it didn't look like it was working. Come on, brother. Amen. And all I could do was get up, walk the floor, and say what the Bible says. And I said, Father, you said you'd never leave me. You'd never forsake me. Come on, come Father, on. you said I am your son. Yeah, you on. are my God. Yes. You're my strength. You're my Hallelujah. helper. You're Thank my rock, my sword, my shield. Yes. Yeah. Begin to tell him what he is to you. Yeah. Yes. This is the only book in existence. When you read it and believe it, you become it. Yes. Right. Amen. You don't read a book and become Thank a you, case. Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> You read this, you will feel righteous and strong in him. Yes. Amen. 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 Now we're going to have a special night for healing, special night for the different things. Uh, I won't go into it right now, but there's times that, 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 that people need spirits caught, cast off of them. Right. Right. Not that they're possessed, but it keeps hanging around them. Yes. And so we're going to have a freedom night. Yes. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, Lord. Yes. But right now, we're going to take up a great big love.